Hello DIY lover, welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a fascinator base at home without using fascinator blocks. So these are the materials I'm going to be needing to make this fascinator base. I have my doll face satin, my bias tape, and I have my boning. So this is boning, but the lighter one, the one you can actually sew on, the normal boning you use for your corset. So I have about two years, this is exactly two years actually. I have my B6000 gum. I have my stapler. So I have my thick wording, the one popularly known as breast pad. Alternatively, you can also use foam in place of the thick wording. And I have this material, this shiny material that I'll be using to cover my fascinator base. So you can use, you can use Ankara, you can use velvet, you can use serpent. You can use any material of your choice depending on how you want your fascinator base to appear. So I'll be using this to cover my fascinator base. I have my all purpose adhesive gum. So this is what it looks like. This is what the gum looks like. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick my boning and I'll be measuring the size of my fascinator base. So I'm just going to measure the size I want for my fascinator base. So just measure any size of your preference, depending on how big or small you want yours to be. So let me just measure like 20 inches for the size of the base I want. So this should be enough for the size of my base. So I'm just going to overlap this by half an inch. And I'll use my stapler to hold this together. So I'm just trying to form the skeleton for my fascinator base. So after forming this, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick my bone in again. I'm going to move away from where I have this pin. I'm just going to shift a little bit from it. And I'll pick my bone in again. I'll place it on another side. And I'm going to staple. I'm going to take this across to the opposite side. So at this point, I'm going to decide the height of my fascinator base. So the higher this is, the deeper your fascinator base is going to look. So I'm just going to adjust this depending on how deep or how flat I want my fascinator base to be. So I'm just going to adjust this. I'm just trying to check how deep I want my fascinator base to be. So I think I'm okay with this. I'll go ahead and staple this again. So let me cut the first stapling. So after creating this, I'll come back to this point. So I'm just going to place this. I'm just making sure this is at the center. So I'm just trying to create a skeleton for my fascinator base. I'll go ahead and staple this. I'm going to take it over to the opposite and I'll staple. And I'll continue repeating this until my skeleton is well formed. So after forming the structure of my fascinator base, I'm going to bring this together at the center like this and I'll use my stapler to secure them. the structure of my fascinator base or you can call it the skeleton of the fascinator base so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to be padding this up at the introduction of this video I mentioned these two materials I mentioned this thick wording and this foam so I'll be using one of these to pad up the structure of my fascinator base so you can either use foam or you can use 
your thick wadding to pad this up but i'll be using foam to pad mine i prefer working with foam because it's more flexible to work with and i believe it gives me a smoother look after making my fascinator base so i'm going to be working with this instead of this so but in the absence of this you can use this and in the absence of this you can use this so next i'm going to do i'll go ahead and cut out what will be enough to pad this so i'm just going to measure from the center of my fascinator base from this center to this point and whatever thing i have i'm using it to cut out my foam after measuring i got five inches so but i'll be adding one inch for the folding allowance so i'll be marking six inches of so I'm using this measurement to cut out the foam I'm using to wrap my fascinator base. So after cutting this out, I'm using this to pad my fascinator base. But I feel this is too light, so I'll be cutting two of these. This is quarter inch foam. But if you're using half inch foam, I think one should just be enough. So after cutting this, before using it to pad my fascinator base, I'll be using it to cut out my fabric. So after cutting this, I'm just going to keep this aside and it's time to start padding the fascinator base. So at this point, I'll be needing my gum. I'll just apply a little at this center and I'll be applying it around my fascinator base. So take note, I only applied my gum at the top of my fascinator base and just this area. I didn't apply any gum on this part. So just here and around the fascinator base so after doing this i'm just going to keep this aside to dry a little for some few seconds and i'll use my gum again to bring my foam together i'm just going to apply this just on the edges of this applying my gum on one i will allow this dry for some few seconds after allowing this dry for some few seconds i'm going to bring them together but if you're using a half inch foam just go ahead and use one piece so this quarter inch foam is too light that is why i'm using two of it so after allowing this dry for some few seconds I'm just going to place this, I'm just going to get the center of this and I'm going to place it at the top of my fascinator base. So after placing it at the center, I'll come to this point. I'm just going to fold a little, I'll come to the opposite side. I'm going to fold, I'll come to this point. I'm going to fold in. And I'll come to this point and I'm just going to fold. So I'm using my fingers to straighten the foam on the structure. So after doing this, I'm going to trim off the excess, leaving about one inch, just one inch all around this. So after covering the base properly, after covering the top properly, I'll be folding this in, so I'm just going to apply my gum inside again. So I'll be applying my gum on this part. After applying my gum, I'm just going to let this dry for some few seconds. After letting it dry for some few seconds, I'll go ahead and start folding this in. So I've gone ahead 
to pad this up properly so you can add an additional pad if you feel this is not well padded the way you want but i'm okay with this so the next thing i'm going to do is to wrap this up with my fabric so i'll be applying my gum around this So after applying my gum around, I'll just apply a little of it just at the center of my fabric, just a little. And I'm going to let this dry for some few seconds. After allowing this dry for some few seconds, I'm going to pick my fascinator base and I'm going to place this on the center of my fabric and I'll start wrapping. So after wrapping this part, after folding in this part, I'll come to the opposite side as usual. I'm going to fold in. I'll come to this part. I'm going to pick this and fold in. I'm going to fold in. And I'll continue folding round. Please, as you're folding, make sure you drag this a bit drag it a little bit just drag it a little bit so you won't have any folds around here as you are folding in be checking out for these folds and be smoothing them so just smoothing and fold in as you can see i'm using my fingers to smoothen this so just take your time please take your time so you can end up having a very good fascinator base a very smooth one please after wrapping my fascinator base properly you can see how neatly wrapped it is so the next step is to cover the inside that is rough so i'll be using my door face satin to cover the inside of my fascinator base so i'm just going to place this on my fascinator base and I'm going to use this to cut out the lining for the inside so I'll be marking this leaving about one inch around this so after cutting this I'm just going to place this inside my cap so i'm just checking how well it fits before fixing it permanently but i feel this is a bit big so i'm just going to trim a little i'm just going to trim a little of this i'll be trimming and be checking until I get a perfect size so I feel this is just okay the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'll be using my bias to bias the edges of this so after using my bias tape to pipe the edges of this you can see I'm going to have to use my bias tape to pipe the edges of the lining I'll be using my BC Stars and Gum. I'll be applying it on the edges of my lining. After applying my gum, I'm just going to allow this dry a little bit for some few seconds. I'm just going to fix it inside this now we're using this to close up the roughness i have inside so as you can see i have some excess around it so i'll be pleating it evenly just to make sure i cover this up properly i'm just going to spread the excess by just making a little pleat with it I'll be spreading it evenly.
you can see i'm just placing it a little and i'm just using it to cover the rough part of my fascinator base so after creating the fascinator base and sealing up the rough part inside you can see how beautiful this is looking so at this point you can go ahead and embellish your fascinator with any design of your choice you can go ahead and fix your anise band or any band of your choice at this point just feel free to add any design of your choice depending on how you want your fascinator to appear so this is basically all for this tutorial please let me know what you think about this tutorial in the comment section please subscribe to this channel if you've not done so give this video a like thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye